With Halloween just around the tombstone, I mean corner, the Stranahan house here in Fort Lauderdale has been known to harbor a few skeletons in their closet. But don't worry, we'll be sure to leave the lights on and do our best to ward off any sudden chills as we explore the ghosts of Stranahan. Picture, if you will, a haunted place, in this case a house, specifically the Stranahan House in Fort Lauderdale, where ghost-like images have been reported for some time. There's no need to be alarmed or become obsessed by these eerie connections rising from another dimension. But as a top-notch investigative reporter for Celebrate South Florida, I would be remiss if I didn't... Well, are we turn them in or not? <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> who, me? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right behind you, all the way. Well, as I was saying, the Stranahan House has been a fixture in Fort Lauderdale since it was built in 1901. Well, any house that has been around for over a century usually has some tall tales to tell. And who best to convey the messages from the poor souls who have crossed over but John Mark Carr. John is the gatekeeper for the Fort Lauderdale Ghost Tour and spins spirited tales throughout Fort Lauderdale landmarks, including the Stranahan House. But before dredging up sudden cold chills or bells tolling for the restless dead to rise again, did I mention that Frank Stranahan, known as the father of Fort Lauderdale, built this house and married Ivy Cromarty, who also had the distinction of being the first teacher of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, okay, I know, let's get on to the good stuff. John wastes no time introducing the first tragedy right at the front door. It was 1903, a young Native American girl, eight years old, crossed over the bridge over here. She walked up to the door. She knocked on the door. Where Ivy Stranahan opened up the door to answer. Come on inside. The little girl was very much in a lot of heat and she couldn't talk very well so Ivy went to go get her a glass of water. And what happened is that as she came back, the little girl was already dead right here in the threshold. Hey John, what about Pink Cromarty? It's the early 1900s and Pink Cromarty Moss, Ivy's sister, stayed here because she was seven months pregnant. And they had a bed for her here, and she was waiting for her husband to come back. And when she was seven months pregnant, she got a letter from her husband saying that he was already married to another lady up in New York, New Jersey. So yes, he was a bigamist. She got very upset, and she gave childbirth here. The baby was a stillborn, and she hemorrhaged to death right here inside this alcove. Okay, now that John is all warmed up, let's move on to Albert Camardi, Ivy's brother. He basically died from too much partying and became a very jealous ghost. It was the late 1920s and Albert stayed in this room. Albert was uh, Ivy's brother and Frank's brother-in-law. After Frank Stranahan passed away, Albert decided that he wanted to spend um, his time here. And not only here, he went over to the um, riverfront area where he used to party pretty hardy. And uh, because of his uh, partying, he became um, strict with TB, tuberculosis. Uh, they knew it as consumption during that time period. And he was quarantined in his room for six months. And with TB, either you live with it or you die with it. And Albert died with it within six months. He's not a happy is unhappy that you're alive and he's dead. There are some other good ghosts wandering around the house to make sure guests in the attic. It seems that, well, let's let John enlighten us. People who said they went up to the attic, people used to work here. Um, mostly Dawson's have to go up there, the, the people who do the tours and stuff. And, as they go up the steps, which has no railing on one side where you could literally fall off and hurt yourself, um, you would go up to the door, you would have to latch it and you would have to push it and sometimes people feel like they're going back and they sometimes would feel a hand in the back of their, their back 
pushing them up, making sure that they don't fall down the staircase. So who is this John Mark Carr from the Fort Lauderdale Ghost Tour? We were the original ghost tour here in uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale, and I've been doing it now for about four years now. And what drew you to the Stranahan House? Well, what drew me to the Stranahan House this is the first location that we go to as part of my tour. Uh, we do spend a lot of time here. We spend about at least 30 to 40 minutes describing the different uh, hauntings that happen here at the Stranahan House. Now I gather um, there's a, a lot of hauntings. Um, yes, there are six deaths that occurred here in the house, so we have to go to six different ghosts. That was good. <laughs> okay, let's get to the main attraction first. If she likes you, you get a warm blanket feeling. It's like taking a warm blanket out of a dryer and wrapping around yourself. You get a warm, tingly feeling from your head down to your toes. If you're, um, if she doesn't like you, sometimes she'll get uh, somebody blowing in the back of your ear, like a school teacher watching you cheat on a test, and uh, that's how you know that she doesn't like you. And the blowing in the ear will stay constant until you finally leave. Um, People come here and they also will smell the sweet perfume of ivy if they mention a name a couple of times. Um, they do hear uh, footsteps going up and down the steps. Uh, we do get this rocking chair, will rock on its own for about at least a good um, 15 minutes at a, at a time. Now, this is where it really gets interesting with Mr. Frank Stranahan. He took a sewer grate out and put it inside of the a wheelbarrow, brought it over to the river's edge, went back, got a 10-foot chain and two locks. He locked uh, the chain around his waist, he locked the other end to the sewer grate, walked over to the water's edge, and kaplunk, went right into the water. Frank died that day in May 1929. Now we have what we call a residual haunting of Frank. We do have uh, people say they see a spirit of a man walk along the side of the house, go over to the river's edge, and throw himself in the river. So there you have it, the sad tales of the Stranahan house. Should you choose not to believe that the Stranahan still haunt the house, well, that's your prerogative. But if you happen to be there when something or someone rushes up against your hair and whispers, <sighs> and the lights begin to flicker out, don't say you weren't warned. <laughs>